Okay, uh, everyone listening at home on your computer, if, yes. I, I'm not talking to you yet. <laughs> uh, if you could just give me a head nod, a head nod that you can hear us here in City Hall. Yes, okay, great. It was working a minute ago. Well, that's the issue. It's not really working. One second for everyone at home.
Okay, go on it. You should be ready to start. Right. Well, thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate you being here and giving up your evening to come out and hear about this project. Can you hear me okay? Is that better? No? It's what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Margaret. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you. I'm Cyril Stewart. I'm an architect working on this project along with a group of preservation architects from a place called Eupora, Mississippi, that specialize in historic preservation. And, uh, and I'm here tonight to describe this project to you. This is a very abbreviated presentation. We're going by the format that the city has for neighborhood meetings. Many of you came to a meeting back in September or October uh, where we presented some of this to you. And, uh, and we heard you and we went back and made a lot of changes to the plans. Uh, so if it's a little bit different than what you saw then, it's because we, we listened to you. Uh, we plan to do the same thing tonight. We can't solve everything tonight, but we can sure hear your voices and, uh, and know what you're doing. Are we recording? Excellent. So we're recording. So this is being recorded. Uh, we have Zoom uh, participants out there. I would like to recognize our elected official, uh, Alderman uh, Margaret Martin and Clyde Barnhill. Anybody else elected official here? You can raise your hand. And then we probably have some on Zoom as well. So, uh, so we appreciate you being with us tonight. Uh, also, uh, we've got uh, Eric Stuckey, the city administrator, and Vernon Gerth, who is the assistant city administrator. Um, they, they have done a remarkable job in the 12, 13 years I've been here at helping to steer the incredible growth that y'all have seen down here. So, uh, and appreciate Joey uh, getting everything working together. So that was great. Thank you. So, um, so one of the things that we wanted to do on this screen, uh, right at the bottom of that screen, there is williamsonheritage.org, uh, Franklin Grove. And at that point, there is an hour long video that was done for the neighbors that gives you more detail than we're gonna be able to go into in about 20 minutes tonight. And so, uh, so that has uh, you, you, everything you wanna see about it. And there's also a response uh, link there so that you can send in questions or comments as well uh, on that website. So, uh, so if you'll, Either take a picture of that or write it down if you'd like that. It'll also be on screens toward the end of the presentation. Well, I first came to Franklin a dozen years ago when we were doing the, the Franklin Theater. And wow, what a project. It just captured my heart. Franklin captured my heart. I love it down here. I live in Nashville, but I uh, come down here on a regular basis, several times a week usually, and, uh, and love the, the lifestyle that y'all have created. And this project, I think, uh, is in line with the things that the Heritage Foundation has been doing for 54 years. You know, for 54 years, they've been driving a lot of what's going on with pre historic preservation, adaptive reuse, everything from streetscape to preservation of historic structures, the Franklin Theater, old, old jail, saved a building that was probably gonna be demolished. 
and the list goes on and on, not to mention the festivals and other ad advocacy and things they do for education. So I see this as the, as the ultimate project. It's the most ambitious project ever undertaken by the foundation. And, uh, and I'm confident that it will be the best project as well as we, as we get into it. So um, one of the things that we wanted to do was to orient you. And so, let's see. Oh, too far. So uh, I know that we could blow the screen up a little bit, but it freezes up when we do that. So I'm sorry it's not as big as we'd like for it to be, but uh, Joey and I did the best we could on this. So this is, this is what we have. And so what we have, this is the overall site plan. It's the same thing that you see on the boards around the room. If you want to see it some after the meeting, you're welcome to look at it then too. Uh, to give you an orientation on that, it's obviously the old O'More site. Most of you know that. On the left-hand side of the screen is South Margin Street going up and down, and diagonally across the bottom is Lewisburg Pike. Uh, Main Street is about two blocks over to your left off of the screen, and you can see the, the area that's uh, in green and gray is the, is the site itself. The, um, uh, we are excited about this project. Uh, we're retaining both historic structures on this site, and uh, and, and not only are we retaining them, I'll tell you more about the Winstead House, uh, now the, uh, the art museum that we'll have there, that's really gonna be improved significantly from what it is today. And uh, so as you go onto the site, we are recommending, and, and recommending is what I'm saying because we're just starting the process with the city of going through reviews and approvals. So we're recommending, and our traffic engineers recommended, a major entrance off Lewisburg. If you've been to that entrance off margin, you know that it's dangerous to get in and out of there. There's not much capacity. The street's really narrow there. So our traffic engineers have recommended, uh, recommended Lewisburg. And uh, the, uh, we, we know that part of what goes with that is difficulty at that intersection. When we first met with the city engineers, uh, they said, you know, that's a terrible intersection. We have more crashes there than almost anywhere. That has to be fixed if you can do this project. So we have a quarter million dollars in our budget for this project. To, to fix that intersection. And the fix will be one that's not our design. It's obviously starts with our engineers' recommendations, but then it goes to the city. The city also hires a third party consultant to look at it and the state and city, the state uh, falls into it as well. So it has to be reviewed and deemed to be appropriate by all those parties before anything can happen out there. But we know that has to be fixed. It, we, we definitely need some pedestrian safety there. I don't know whether you've walked through there or not, but. Uh, it's, it's a dangerous intersection. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. So, um, so once you come into that entrance, uh, it'll be two ways in and out. There's a roundabout right in the center of the site. It's right next to Ms. O'More's apartment. That was the cafe more recently. And that will become the visitor center for the entire site, right in the heart of the site. Uh, there's some parking on the right. And uh, if there's a shuttle bus or trolley or uh, Uber or ride share services, they can drop off at that area as well. If there's anyone with mobility problems, not only will the site be fully accessible, but you'll be able to drop off people uh, to get them right at the entrance. And so uh, that's in, in the old apartment and that's the visitor center. It takes people in. We're putting in an elevator so that the art museum will be accessible on both levels. And, uh, and then the other thing that's just opened, when you first go onto the site, as you go in, you see the parking lot on your right. The first building on your right is now uh, the Lehu Innovation Center. It's already open and operating. We have uh, uh, some groups that have moved out of their own offices in their garage or in their basement uh, that are growing their businesses. It's a joint venture with Williamson uh, Inc. So we're excited about that too. And um, then as you go around the site, uh, toward the right-hand side on the screen is the conservatory. Now we'll show you a larger plan of that conservatory as we go on. But uh, we, we worked long and hard to figure out the best place to put that. And what we decided was that instead of having it where any sound would project out toward the neighbors, that we would make it where that sound is directed back toward this property rather than at the neighbors. Uh, we, we don't anticipate sound because uh, we're doing the same kind of sound locks there that we have at the Franklin Theater. And if you walk down Main Street, you don't hear the band rocking way in there. And we plan to do the same kind of sound locks here. Uh, to keep the sound inside and not to, not to go outside. 
as you're going around, one of the things that we heard is right at the top of the screen, the small building there, it's at about the location where the two-story mansard roof structure is now. And one of the things that we heard at those meetings in September and October was that you didn't want tenant events on this. No more simply seersucker and those kind of events. And so we have committed that there'll be no tenant events on the site. There'll be no amplified music outside. Uh, those were things that we heard loud and clear. And so that is a conservatory so that everything can be contained within that. The smaller one is the summer house. The summer house is for smaller gatherings and smaller groups. Oh, and, and uh, not to leave it out, but the, uh, one of the jewels of this is right in the front yard there, close to Lewisburg, which is the, uh, the Lee Buckner School. It's an amazing historic 1927 schoolhouse uh, that we'll use to tell not only the story of that schoolhouse, but a huge story of education on the site. So this is a view, oh, one, two. So this is a view of the gardens. If you were in a hot air balloon over Margin Street, looking down at it, you can see what was the Winstead House there, which will be the art museum. And, uh, and so we're developing gardens. One of the other things that we heard during the uh, meetings in September and October was that you didn't want large lawns where things could happen like you know, an amphitheater type of situation or bands out there. So this is all a series of smaller garden rooms is what our landscape architect calls it. And, uh, and this one really shows how the front yard can be dealt with from a, a grading standpoint. There is a pretty good drop down to Margin Street. You can see the Lee Buckner School on the right-hand side there. We want that to open onto a grassy lawn that would be more like the playground uh, for the schoolhouse. And uh, so that's, we think that'll be an appropriate orientation for that schoolhouse. Now in the back, uh, probably the most historic element on this site is that oak tree. Our arborist estimates it might be as, as old as 300 years old. It's the beautiful tree in good shape and healthy. We wanna preserve that tree just as much as we preserve the buildings. And so here you can see the oak tree in the middle of the oak garden. Uh, behind it, you see the conservatory. We've downsized that conservatory significantly since the original drawings back in September and October. And uh, so we'll fit into this environment. On the left-hand side, you see a peak uh, of the summer house there. We already talked about the Leahy Mansion and the Center for Innovation. Uh, it's a beautiful structure that's been lovingly restored uh, and used for, uh, for innovation and entrepreneurs. This is the Museum of Art, and uh, you can see it stays pretty much like it is. And we really want to restore that. The front of that structure is so beautiful, but if you go around to the back, it's really not. Uh, <laughs> we call those additions that were done over the decades, unfortunate additions. And so our idea is to make the back of that structure, take it back to the original structure and make it as beautiful now as it was in the past. Um, so that it'll be a great asset to this place. This is the summer house and the summer house it shows 144 seats in there for smaller venues, smaller groups of people. Uh, again, we have sound locks uh, at all the doors and uh, really working to make sure that sound stays inside the buildings. We'll do triple pane glass and, uh, and have high sound trans, uh, transfer coefficients uh, with all the walls and construction. And this is the conservatory. And I told you that the conservatory it's really designed to try to keep the sound inside. So if you look at the walls on the top and both sides, those will be beautifully detailed brick walls that will hide a lot of sound bats, a lot of sound attenuation, so that no sound or light penetrates those walls. And we've located things like bathrooms, catering kitchens, and that kind of stuff along that wall uh, because they don't generate the sound that you might have from a, a wedding band or something inside. Uh, the, uh, inside has the, the area for dining tables. You can see people sitting at tables there. And then a special room that can be used uh, for smaller events as well. The, um, and all the glass for this structure orients out toward the garden and not toward the neighbors so that we don't have any light infiltration. Um, all the lighting on the site will be invisible uh, from offsite. Uh, we'll, we'll have it either shining down on the surfaces or low lights 
uh, that will not intrude upon the, uh, the area. You can see the rendering on the bottom uh, that shows the, the glass wall and the entrances off that garden. The carriage house is the existing structure that's there. Some people know it as the studio, some as the pavilion, and it is just going to be repurposed to house offices uh, for, the, for the staff on the site. The Lee Buckner Schoolhouse, we've already talked a little bit about that. That will come here uh, and be uh, restored to its original appearance and, uh, and tell a, an amazing story of education on this site. This is the overall site plan uh, that we have. Again, it's the same as on the boards if you want to look at it as you leave. And now I'm going to ask uh, Vernon uh, Girth, the Assistant City Administrator, to talk to you about process and the role the city plays in all of this. Vernon? Thank you, Daryl, and um, thank you, everybody, for taking time out of your day to, to join us. Um, as as uh, Joey may have mentioned, the neighborhood meetings is part of the city's development process <laughs> that um, uh, is conducted by the applicant, in this case, the Heritage Foundation. The city team is here just to observe that it's being conducted and gleaning the comments that are being shared amongst the, the citizens and the applicant as we go forward through this process. Um, since I was here, I thought that I would share the city's uh, key dates of the process related to the, the Franklin Grove Estates and Gardens um, development approval process. And um, I'm not gonna read everything on the screen, but I'm, I'm gonna highlight specifically those areas in which afford citizens the opportunity for public comment. So starting tonight, you're, dire you're directing your comments um, to the applicant, Cyril and, and his team. On um, September 20th and October 18th, um, they are planning to appear before the Design Re Re Review Committee of the Historic Zoning Commission. The purpose of that meeting with the members of the Historic Zoning Commission is to get input on the exterior improvements that they um, intend to make on the site. And later they'll come to back to the Historic Zoning Commission for formal approval. But as they evolve their plan, it's we always advise applicants that are in our historic overlay to appear before the design review committee to receive input on what they're proposing. This, these uh, meetings are open to the public, but there's not opportunity for public comment. It's simply between the applicant and those members that uh, appear on behalf of the Historic Zoning Commission to provide input. Um, if everything goes as expected, Cyril and the Heritage Foundation um, intend to submit a formal application into the city's uh, prescriptive review process on October 7th. Um, if that happens, the dates that you see on the screen and that will be posted on the website um, will come to reality or fruition. Um, on November the 8th, um, there'll be uh, a meeting before the Histor Historic Zoning Com Commission for a preliminary recommendation on what the, the Heritage Foundation is proposing. Then on um, December the 9th, uh, the, the Heritage Foundation will appear before the Planning Commission and Board of Mayor and Aldermen in a joint workshop. This is an opportunity for the planning commissioners and aldermen to hear from the applicant what will appear on an agenda in the very near future. This meeting does not afford for public comment, but certainly uh, the public can be in attendance. Um, based on what the applicant has shared thus far, uh, they are likely to need to appear before the zoning board of appeals for a variance determination. And if so, and they stay on schedule, that would happen in the beginning of January. And at 
the Board of Zoning Appeals January 6th meeting. Um, as the project proceeds and at the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, there is an opportunity for public comment and the property owners within a 500 foot radius of the site are notified by mail. But also since you're here, we hope that you do stay um, in tune with the website that um, will have this information available. On uh, January 27th is the, when the Franklin Municipal Planning Commission meets and there'll be a public hearing on the proposed plan. Again, another opportunity for the public to express themselves. Then the, um, that plan and recommendation from the Franklin Municipal Planning Commission will move on to a work session scheduled for um, February 8th. Um, that's, uh, that will be an opportunity for the aldermen to hear initially what the recommendation of the Planning Commission was and for limited conversation with the applicant and potentially um, limited opportunity for citizens to address the alderman. The first reading of the rezoning application and a, a rezoning application requires three readings and decisions by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. The first would be on February 22nd. The second, would reading would be on March 22nd, at which time the second reading of the rezoning will afford a public hearing and the opportunity for citizen input. And then also on the development plan. So there'll be two public hearings, one for the rezoning, one for the development plan. The board will vote on the development plan at that time. The development plan requires only one reading before the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. And then again on April 12th will be the third reading of the rezoning. And that would be um, the duration of the approval process. If that proceeds and the approvals are granted, um, then the applicant would move through a site plan development process, which are essentially the civil engineering drawings, architectural drawings that would be needed to obtain a grading permit, building permits, et cetera. Um, hopefully I've shared with you the, the opportunities for public comment. Um, the city takes pride in being transparent and having a process that affords for ample opportunity. And um, if I count this up from beginning today, that's seven opportunities for public input between now and um, March 22nd. Um, again, I encourage you and everybody um, interested in development around the city, not only to contact city staff regarding required meetings, but also on our website, we have a robust um, web pages and calendars that provide for all the projects in our community. Thank you, Sarah. it's a fairly complex process and as vernon mentioned uh that process can be delayed at any point in time uh through you know additional work with the city or other things that might come up you know one of the things i have found about the city process here and about the process that we've had since we started our meetings with all back in september and october is the project gets better as it goes along and that's that's part of the reason that we do this process so the next thing we're going to do is go to questions and answers. And again, uh, we have this website here. So if you wanna see the longer video that talks more about the project, you can do that. Also, uh, you can submit questions. We had comment forms out front. There are a few of them down here. If you wanna write down your comments, you don't wanna speak. And then we also have a, a, a chat feature. So if you're on this by Zoom, if you will go to, there's a little bubble with a you know, sort of like a, um, like you see on cartoons that says chat. And if you will click on that chat feature uh, with your question or your comment, uh, then that'll go to Christina Metzger and Christina will do that. The way we'll do it is that we'll alternate. So that there'll be a question from the group here and our comment, and then there'll be a question or comment uh, from the online audience that we have. And we'll do that until uh, 6.30, uh, which is when our official time to finish up. Is. 
kids. So if that works with everybody, uh, we, we appreciate that. Okay. Uh, we can start off with comments here in this room. Don't be shy. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, sure, we can do it. Yeah, I'm Walter Green, and I live at uh, 227 Fourth Avenue South, which is about a block from the project site. Um, I'm very involved in the concerned neighbors of Franklin Grove, the CNFG, which is the official neighborhood group that has come together to show concern about some of the features at Franklin Grove. I want to make it really clear that the neighborhood group is not anti-development, not anti-growth, anti-Franklin Grove, anti-Heritage Foundation. We are anti-event venues. I, I never thought that I'd have to be here defending with my neighbors work proposed by the Heritage Foundation, but, but here we are. My questions are for Heritage Foundation management. I'm not sure it's pretty fair for you to do this. But anybody who wants to answer can do so. Does it matter to the Heritage Foundation that the majority of the neighbors who live near Franklin Grove do not want an event venue in their lovely neighborhood? And second, does the Heritage Foundation worry that if they continue trying to shove unwanted event venues into Franklin Grove, that their image will be stained? Thank you. So, so we are going to wind up maybe agreeing to disagree, maybe disagreeing to disagree. But one of the things that we are very, very committed to is for this project to be of the same quality, the same controls of everything else that the Heritage Foundation has done. And we will work to accommodate the concerns. And just as we've changed the plan already, we're working to look at that. Uh, we'll take those questions. You know, all the questions are going to the city as well as to the foundation. And we'll take all these questions tonight and take them under advisement. We'll get back with a number of you on these as well. So, okay. So, you get back to me on answering my questions? Yes, we will. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> How beautiful is that? Hi, everybody. Um, so I'll drill down on something a little bit more specific um, about that. I think this is a gorgeous project. I think the gardens are something that we could have all dreamed of, and I'm grateful for all the people who have come together to make that happen. I think the plan's beautiful. I've loved the work that Cyril has done and I'm so appreciative of it. It's very specifically, obviously, we're concerned about the Gordon Inman event venue in the back. That is what has our concerns. Um, and I'm specifically concerned about the size of it because I, I know the overall size is 14,000 square feet. Uh, I understand that five, more than 5,000 that's in the basement. Sounds like there's good use for that. I also understand that we have over, I think it's 8,800 square feet at ground level. So I did not see that it was broken down by square foot in the drawings that we saw that were submitted to the city. But people that were smarter than me could figure out how to scale that up. And it looks like if you combine the boardroom and the ballroom, it's about 5,200 square feet. That's a really large venue. I, I know that you see the drawings for 192 people on those little tables, which is not a, a crazy number, but that space would allow seated at round tables for about 430 people at round tables, over 700 if you're at a standing reception. Now, I'm not saying that that's what the Heritage Foundation is planning on doing. I'm just curious why you're building a space that's twice as big as what the numbers that are being represented are showing. And I know from having done some event planning 
you don't want a space that's way too big. If you have a space that's way too big, if you have 192 people in a space that could hold over twice that many, it looks like everybody didn't come to your party and nobody wants that. So that's been my biggest concern about the whole thing, Cyril, and I'm happy for you to answer. As, long, as soon as I find what I do with my earring when I took this off. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Glad it wasn't mine. <laughs> so, uh, so it's it's a fair question. It's a good question, and and I will tell you that um, that we have we, we have designed that. I mean, those 192 seats that we came in was not at tables of 10, but tables of eight, which is a much better venue for people being able to talk to each other and being in there. It's, uh, it's also gonna be controlled by the amount of parking and traffic that comes out of our traffic studies. We, uh, we, we met with uh, months ago, city engineering and went through a methodology for coming up with the traffic analysis. And uh, that was right at the beginning of COVID. And obviously taking traffic counts during COVID is not something that really works. But we came up with a methodology to be able to project that. But then as we were coming out of this, uh, the city asked us to go back and do new counts after school started this year. Now, you know, it may be different now, but when school started, things were pretty well hopping all around before we went back into the, the COVID uh, crisis. And so, uh, so we've got traffic counts on that or putting together new projections. The, the actual numbers of people on the site will be determined by the, by the capacity of the parking, the capacity of the, of the, of the roads. So that's, that's what I say. That, you know, if it winds up that it's better to shrink this a little bit, you know, we'll go back and look at that. We've already done that uh, since uh, since our meetings in September and October. Okay. Did the capacity be decided before the public hearings start taking place? Well, well, like I said, the the um, the traffic and parking is a huge part of what the city looks at. So we've got to come up with that. You're saying that, that everybody coming to the event venue is going to be able to park on the property? Uh, we have requested that we be able to use shuttle buses that go to our 54 spaces that are at the old, old jail. Can you go into the traffic situation a little bit more? Because I still don't understand it. I know that if you put roughly 250 people at the, at the conservatory and another 144 at the summer house, you've got roughly 400, 450, now you get staff in there. You're gonna have roughly 500 people on site at any given time in a big event, a wedding reception or a ball or whatever. Um, I don't understand the traffic. I know we said, okay, you're going to put some red lights up and that everything is going to be fine. I don't, I don't see that. And I, I don't, I can't think that through because if I'm coming down South Market and I'm going to turn left upon the Lewisburg Pike, as soon as I turn left, there's room for about 10 cars before you got to turn into the, the road. So you turn left, the cars line up 10 cars. They can't turn left into the road because it's north Lewisburg Pike is jammed up because of the red line. So you're going to have a traffic cluster right there. And it, I mean, how do you solve that? And I'm going to be behind them, and I'm going to be trying to get past them to get up to Barry Circle. And I'm going to be praying for somebody at Barry Circle to give me enough room to get into the street. Level. That's my biggest concern about the traffic. I think there's just too much and too small of a space to handle that amount of cars coming up. And if they're coming into the, the roundabout, they're going in. They're unloading grandma and grandpa, and they're, they're unloading gifts, and they're doing everything. They're going to be stopped there for about five minutes before they come back out on the Lewisburg Pike, which is going to create a little problem. You're going to have the traffic coming in. You're going to have it going all at the beginning of the event, but then you're going to have the same thing at the end of the event. So they're all coming in, trying to pick people up, load the grandbabies back up, load grandma and grandpa back up, and get back out on the Lewisburg Park. I just see a huge, huge, huge problem for somebody like me that lives in Barry Circle, that right now, when you pull up on Lewisburg Pike, literally you have, to, you have to have a lot of friends that see you and let you in to your own street that you live in. I mean, can you go into the, the traffic situation a little bit more than what I've seen so far? Sure. So, so the question is really about traffic. And, and, and I, that's, if you heard all that, I know some people on Zoom probably didn't hear all that, but it's really about huge concerns about traffic. I will tell you that the traffic study that I've seen is about 160 pages. I'm an architect. I don't understand everything, but we do have people with the city. They have people they use. If it doesn't work, they're not going to approve it. And so that's that's where I have to put my... Once you get this event built and it doesn't work, we're, 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 I don't want to use the word 
working on getting ready for you. <laughs> We're in trouble. I mean, I'm in trouble. I'm going to spend 45 minutes trying to get from one end of Franklin to my house while you in Nashville are having dinner with your family. I'm going to be sitting in my car trying to get home to get to this whole side. For somebody that lives, I'm on 313 Berry Circle. My property joins the southwest corner mm -hmm. of the crow. And my important, I can't determine, I'm not retired, so I can come and go as I please. I have a, a pattern. I got to come in after work and go in at work. And these events, I'm assuming, are going to be in the evening, six o'clock, seven o'clock at night. Um, I just don't see the traffic. I, I just don't see how that's going to work out for the neighbors. Yeah. Uh, like I said, let us work through it. All those traffic reports are going to go to the city. They'll be available for the public. So, so we'll do that. Uh, Christina, do we have an online? Yes. My name is Peter Shea. I live um, at 813 Evans Street. I'm a new, uh, I'm not a native of Franklin, which I suppose doesn't make me unique. Um, <laughs> I am very grateful for what the Heritage Foundation has done. And it, I think, significantly attracted me to the city. I give them the benefit of the doubt here. And my intuition is that when um, wealthy people will spend millions and millions of dollars in my community to make one of our amenities something um, notable on a national level that we ought to think very hard about running them off. I live in this area. I have to go past this site every day to work. And I consider it uh, the real question is what happens if we run these people off and they take their millions and millions of dollars and go elsewhere. And I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that we have the ability to ruin the economics of this thing and preserve a wonderful park. And so I, I think we just need to be honest with ourselves about those things. And I, I'm I'm, I don't want to have a screwed up party for a traffic situation. I work for a living. But I, I also don't want to act as though we can sit here and machine gun this thing and then have something that, you know, works in our fantasy world that, uh, you know, I, my sense is that we can run this opportunity out of town and then, you know, well done, everybody. So I, I, I am supportive of it. I don't think that we're worried Which, about the, the, the money and the beauty. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful development. It could be a bunch I just of think that it's, it it's, could be a bunch of town. Yeah, it could okay. be. Okay. Yes, sir. Excuse me, everyone. Uh, this is a Q&A. This is not a forum. So I, <laughs> and uh, so some of us do live in Nashville, and I can tell you the traffic is not great. Uh, but anyway, that's a whole other story. But please just direct your questions and comments just to Cyril and Cyril's team, and then we can get out of here and everyone have hopefully a good uh, Thursday night. So thank you. He, he's, he's next, and then I saw Margaret Martin, and you'll be right after that. So, yes, sir. First of all, we're, we're in uh, Franklin, Tennessee, so we, we have problems a lot through here, but potential problems are all the same. You seem like a quality individual, and you've done quality work in this city. The, the, uh, the Franklin Theater is a gem, and if you were involved in that, you know, she turned out great. Uh, Mike Desmond is my name. I live a pitching wedge away from the driveway of O'Moore. Um, and I believe it's an underused asset. It's, it's a beautiful piece of property, and I think we're close, but I don't think we're right on the money here. Um, and my concern is from my, uh, a parking standpoint. People talk about traffic flow and parking. We have a sample size here, right? Because people are theorizing, well, what really would this be like? Uh, for those that are live on 4th Avenue South, that happened to be there on graduation day at a war. I'm just curious, who's like on Fourth Avenue South or close to this property? We were there on graduation day. Now it's in the morning. 
people dressed up. You know what? We we got it out and we bear it, but Fourth Avenue turned into a parking lot. Um, it was one day a year, and you know, we're glad for the students graduating, grandma, grandpa, kids, everything, and it was good, but it was one event a year. This event scares me when I see you know 100, 150 events a year. And, and, and you having to deal with that kind of situation two or three times a week. That's going to be, a, you know, a big, big problem. So again, I think underused asset. I like all your, your plans and everything, but somehow this, this parking and traffic, we, we've got to double and triple down and get that thing figured out. So Margaret and others that are here at the city administration, if you can double down and work with that, I, I think you have the ability to work this thing out. <laughs> all the woman, Martin. Robert Martin, Fourth Ward Alderman, neighbor. This is a beautiful piece of property. Uh, and I, I applaud the Heritage Foundation for stepping in, buying it, and preserving it. I want the house preserved. My father was born in the left hand bedroom upstairs. So I, I go back, I, my roots go deep. And so it's very important to me that it is preserved. We don't need the venue. And when I say, Cyril, you don't need a venue. I, they asked me to address you. So I'm <laughs> addressing the <them. laughs> venue. don't need the venue to, to preserve and protect this piece of property. It can be done with the house and making it an art museum. I would love to see it as a house museum. I was just at Cheekwood last week. Cheekwood doesn't have a huge venue on the property when they have something they put up again, whatever, but they don't, they don't have it right on the place. The, the house is the focal point. The gardens are there. These gardens are lovely. I can't imagine who in the world is going to Keep them because <laughs> but, but the, what the point is, I don't think you need the venue to make it work. You might need to work. You need the venue to make the money. That's where the money is. And so it's a question do you want to preserve it or do you want to make it a, a commercial? Business out of it, yeah, in our neighborhood, and and that's what the neighbors want. They don't mind. You know, we we're not going to get into a whole lot of argument about all this, and and I hear what you're saying. I really do. The the one thing when we did the Franklin Theater, uh, we partnered with the League of Historic American Theaters. And they said, there's no way that theater is going to work. They said, it's just crazy. They said, number one, you've got to raise all the money so there's no debt on it because debt will take you down to a dark hole. And then they said, for every dollar that you raise in ticket sales, you're going to have to raise a dollar in, in donations to keep that alive. Now, fortunately, the foundation has done a great job, but that's been not from $6 movie tickets. That's been from renting it out to businesses during the day. It's been uh, for, you know, having concerts and that kind of thing. And it's been good for the community. It's been good for everybody, but it doesn't, it's not a moneymaker. That's not the goal. You had a question. Okay. I just, yeah, um, just because it's a and I just wanted to, this is what I think about. When I drive down the road and hills real tight and they're widening the roads and they're, you know, tearing up those, those houses, the, the, the road is going to half their front yards. I just feel like we need to keep in mind as we're going through this process that if this happens, I'm, I'm for development. Not sure about the venues. I live, at, I live immediately across from the new entrance and exit. I'm one of the first. Mm -hmm. So that entrance and exit is going to be my front yard. I'm worried about you know, yeah, so if it goes through, fine, good, five years. How about 10 years ago when Lewisburg's going to be expanded? All of that. I think we all need to keep that in mind when we look at Hillbro Road and Franklin Pike. I mean, we need to keep that in mind because that may not be an issue today, but I certainly see that as an issue. In the past. Thank you. 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 Th
Thank you. Uh, we, we have one online here. Um, for anyone wanting to make in-person question or comment, please come up to the microphones. Everyone at home can also hear you. So just keep that in mind. Good. Uh, let me do this one online. online. Stay right there and let me do it. We have one online here. It says, can you speak to the economic development this will bring to downtown Franklin area? Cheekwood vitalized Belmead and Cheekwood is one road into and out and property values of homes benefited greatly. Uh, I, I think the question sort of speaks to, uh, to, to their perception and what's happened at Cheekwood. Uh, that's every intent is to do things that are beneficial uh, for the neighbors and, and take care of problems. Uh, you know, one, one of the other things that we've been told by the city that we're gonna have to solve is the water pressure issue. We know there's a water pressure issue there. And, uh, and so that's, that's one of the things that, that we've got to do as part of this project as well. Yes, sir. <clears throat> my name is Mike Tanner. Uh, my wife, Joni, and I live at 111 Lewisburg Avenue. We're the first driveway past Berry Circle. We'll be the first driveway past this development. I'm a big fan of Cyril's, known him for years. So talented, so, so much integrity, very good at what he does. Vernon and the city, we've been here for 28 years in, in our house, 48 years in Franklin. Um, seen a lot of changes in Franklin. And we're very proud when we say to people, here's where we live, and they say, you just love living down there. And we go, you just don't know how great it is because our kids walked downtown. Our grandkids have walked downtown. We have grandkids that I would not let walk downtown right now. I'm proud of what the Heritage Foundation has done in the city of Franklin. I really am. We've been a part of the Heritage Foundation in the past. I hate to say this, but it almost feels like the Heritage Foundation has become a private club. And if you're not at a certain level, you're not going to get attention. And this happened to me just recently with the, with the Main Street Festival. Could not be madder at, at the way I was treated. That's another story. What we love about living where we are is we can say it's never going to change. Nothing around us will ever change. When you're in other developments and other opportunities, there's opportunity to change. Not where we are. Um, I'm going to address the, the traffic just a little bit. I got on TDOT's uh, website looking at traffic counts with the AADTs, which average, I think it's called the average um, daily, traffic. daily traffic count at any 24 hour period in one place. Over 100,000 cars, this was in 2018, over 100,000 trips in and out of Franklin to that core area. I know it's increased since 2018, 25, 26% up to 2018. To me, when I came in tonight and saw the main entrance off of Lewisburg, I was absolutely shocked. I knew there was a curb cut there. I, I, I did a little, ciphering on my own if you take a i don't know the traffic engineer i'm a little dis disadvantaged but the average length of a car from front to back in the space has to be between another somewhere between 15 and 20 feet if you back 20 cars up at any light anywhere that's over the length of the titans football field going four different ways it is going to be a nightmare i i was on my way here today from my house i was going to turn down margin and come up for it. It was already backed up. I told my wife, I said, this is what's going to piss me off. And I turned, probably not legally, but I did. I've gone through the Heritage Foundation's presentation, very well done. Something that struck me every time I looked at it, the leading bullet was internal stakeholders and the community was last. And I don't know that that was intentional. Don't really care. Internal stakeholders are me and my wife and everybody who's invested in that community. We lived, we moved there 28 years ago because we wanted to invest right there and be there. So we're the internal stakeholders. Um, there's been, a. I'm going to finish with this. I had about 20 questions. They're going to be answered in the next meetings. I'm confident that y'all will do a great job. Traffic will be an enemy. And, and, and I'll say this about the internal stakeholders as community. There's been a lot of talk in the last week about people left behind. That may sound a little political, but don't leave us behind. Don't let that community be left behind that we're not internal stakeholders, we are. 
So I'm just, I'm imploring you, look at that traffic thing, look at what's going on. How many venues are in Nashville that will be affected that, I mean, in Franklin that can't, they may lose business going there. So maybe the economy goes a different way. I'm just saying, we love where we're at. I don't want to leave. Well, I think we have time for one or two more questions. Somebody, yes, ma'am. I, I'll, I'll repeat the question, sir. And what's your name, ma'am? That's Miss Georgia Harris. She's been in Franklin since the time that we had one traffic light and one policeman, <laughs> two policemen. And, uh, and uh, she uh, also went to the Lee Buckner School, uh, which is the one we're planning on moving here. And so, so I, I hear that you're in support of moving the school. Is that, is that right? That's your history, absolutely. <laughs> Hi, my name is Bob Ravener, downtown neighbor. And uh, I certainly uh, applaud and appreciate the Heritage Foundation and all they've done. Uh, I, I think like a lot of people, most of us are not against growth, not against development. And we're talking about what future traffic issues are gonna be. Traffic today doesn't work downtown. South margin, <laughs> South margin is unsafe today. Uh, I am, on and around South Margin almost every day. You can't get across fourth without almost getting in an accident every, every time you try. <laughs> adding to a, uh, adding traffic lights, I, and I agree with the comments, it's gonna back things up even more. That whole margin third corridor coming in from 96 is a nightmare today. And I think the city has to address the downtown traffic problem as it exists. And this is only gonna exacerbate it. And so we got to solve that. I mean, what, what you guys have done is a beautiful, beautiful project. And would, I think we'd love to see our downtown neighborhood and the public be able to access something so beautiful. But we've got some issues with the way we can get there today, much less how it's going to be going forward. And, and then one question I have for all of you that uh, I haven't heard addressed at all. Will the grounds be open to the public free of charge? Will it be member only? Will it be some fee associated with it because I think people as residents would want to know that as part of the, the uh, solution as well. Thank you. Okay. So, so there was a question there about whether the grounds would be open to the public. Uh, we have talked to neighbors that have access now about being able to do that, but uh, this will be primarily like Cheekwood. That's a membership thing. We have talked about opportunities. When we did the Franklin Theater, we wanted it to be available for everybody. And so we're looking at ways that we might be able to do that. Uh, with this with this facility as well. Kelly. Thank you. I live at 315 Fourth Avenue South with my husband Chad. Hey honey. Hi. I'm Kelly Dannenfelser. I've worked for the city for almost 18 years now, but I'm speaking as a citizen tonight. I've seen a lot of neighborhood meetings and this is the first time that I felt compelled to ask some questions because I have some grave concerns about the event venue impacting our neighborhood. And I just wanna say for the record that I have not been involved with any of the meetings or the process for these applications so that I can avoid that conflict of interest. But the questions I have, I don't find that there's enough information about the conservatory to really know how it's going to operate and how that will really impact my street and my neighborhood and the parking in front of our houses every weekend. Uh, so I'd like to have these questions answered, not necessarily tonight, but at some point early in the process so that we really know what we're facing. And one is what is the size of the conservatory? 
from the building footprint, it appears to rival the sum of all the other building footprints on the property. What's the mac maximum occupancy of the conservatory and the summer house according to the fire code? Because that determines occupancy of the building. Is parking being provided for that capacity? What are the proposed hours of operation so that we know how late into the evening these events will be taking place? Will the other uses such as the museum and the innovation center be open while there's an event at the summer house or the conservatory? Will there be two events at one time, both events happening at the same time because those impacts are pretty high? And what standards are, are not being met with this that need a variance for the, for the proposal? Thank you. So, so we're over time, but, but if you want to do one last one, that'd be fine. I'm Chuck Rose. I live on 4th Avenue um, with my wife, Mary Levin, in the back. Um, I think I, I'm remembering a campaign. Mike Tanner said, we're not talking about politics, but I remember a long time ago, some, one of the presidential candidates said, it's about the economy. You guys remember that? This really is about the large event venue the uncertainty of the size, the frequency, the number of people which drives parking, which drives traffic, which drives noise. So if I were a leader in the Heritage Foundation, I ask you to hear us say this, we love preservation. I've read your mission statement many times, preservation comes first. I, like many others, the gentleman talked about why you moved here, I moved here because I love this historic town. I love the people. I love the community, I love the character. Our large concern, and I've heard the theater be talked about. The theater we all know is a business in a business district. This is at the center of a neighborhood. That's our concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if we could ask you one thing as a community, we wanna work with you. We wanna see the gardens. We wanna see the wise old oak tree I keep hearing, kept hearing get referred to in your presentation. The gardens, the Lee Buckter Schoolhouse, it's amazing. We're all for that. This large event venue or the two event venues, the Gordon Inman Conservatory and the Summer House should not be in our neighborhoods where we're concerned about whether Mike Tanner could get in his yard. Eric George is 45 minutes to get up his 500 feet driveway. And the rest of us are worried about running across South Margin and getting run over. Thank you. We appreciate everybody coming tonight. We appreciate everybody that's online. Uh, we appreciate your interest in this project. Uh, we will, we've heard all this. Uh, the city will get a uh, recording of this as well as, uh, as the well as the questions that were asked. So um, thank you for coming tonight and uh, we look forward to the next meeting together.